Welcome to Through the Bible in a Year with Pastor John. We invite you to join us at 1 Oakley Avenue in North Providence, Rhode Island. This podcast is presented to you by The Way Ministries, supported by listeners like you. For donations, live videos, podcasts, and more, please visit www.thewayministriesri.org. Thank you and have a great day. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Through the Bible in a Year with Pastor John. Glad you could join me today to get a portion of God's Word. Today we're going to begin in Walk 5, January 5th, Abram's Call and God's Promises, Genesis 12 to 14. Overview. Having dealt with a rebellious people for generations, God now begins to unfold His great plan of redemption, a plan beginning with one man, Abram. God calls Abram to leave his home in Ur of the Chaldeans and travel to a distant but unspecified new land. Responding in faith, Abram obeys with nothing to cling to but the promises of God, promises of a great name, a great nation, and a great blessing for all people. The journey is not without its moments of danger as seen in the life of Lot, but through it all, Abram dares to believe God for what seems impossible given his childless condition. Insight. Promises, promises. In Genesis 12, verses 2 to 3 and 7, we have a record of eight profound world-changing promises that God made to Abram, later called Abraham. In Galatians 3.29, the Apostle Paul explained that if you belong to Christ, you are the true children of Abraham, you are his heirs, and God's promise to Abraham belongs to you. Insight, the true test of values, chapter 13, verse 15. Lot's choice of the well-watered plains of the Jordan was the beginning of his downfall, for it caused him to pitch his tent toward the wicked city of Sodom. By contrast, Abram was building his life on the promises of God. Lot chose for himself. Abram allowed God to choose for him. Insight, majestic, mysterious king. Melchizedek is the king of Salem and a priest of God Most High. His name means king of justice. After Abraham defeated the kings, Melchizedek brought him bread and wine and blessed him. This prefigures a time when another king and priest, the Messiah, would come to meet his people, the spiritual descendants of Abraham. He blesses us with bread and wine, his body and blood, and will feast with us in his father's kingdom. Chapter 12. The Lord had said to Abram, Leave your native country, your relatives, and your father's family, and go to the land that I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous, and you will be a blessing to others. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who treat you with contempt. All the families on earth will be blessed through you. So Abram departed as the Lord had instructed and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he left Haran. He took his wife Sarai, his nephew Lot, all his wealth, his livestock, and all the people he had taken into his household at Haran and headed for the land of Canaan. When they arrived in Canaan, Abram traveled through the land as far as Shechem. There he set up a camp beside the Oak of Morah. At that time, the area was inhabited by Canaanites. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, I will give this land to your descendants. And Abram built an altar there and dedicated it to the Lord who had appeared to him. After that, Abram traveled south and set up camp in the hill country with Bethel to the west and Ai to the east. There he built another altar and dedicated it to the Lord and he worshipped the Lord. Then Abram continued traveling south by stages toward the Negev. At that time, a severe famine struck the land of Canaan, forcing Abram to go down to Egypt, where he lived as a foreigner. As he was approaching the border of Egypt, Abram said to his wife Sarai, Look, you are a very beautiful woman. When the Egyptians see you, they will say, This is his wife. Let's kill him. Then we can have her. So please tell them you are my sister. Then they will spare my life and treat me well because of their interest in you. 
And sure enough, when Abram arrived in Egypt, everyone spoke of Sarai's beauty. When the palace officials saw her, they sang her praises to Pharaoh, their king, and Sarai was taken into his palace. Then Pharaoh gave Abram many gifts because of her, sheep, goats, cattle, male and female donkeys, male and female servants, and camels. But the Lord sent terrible plagues upon Pharaoh and his household because of Sarai, Abram's wife. So Pharaoh summoned Abram and accused him sharply. What have you done to me? he demanded. Why didn't you tell me she was your wife? Why did you say she is my sister and allow me to take her as my wife? Now then, here is your wife. Take her and get out of here. Pharaoh ordered some of his men to escort them, and he sent Abram out of the country, along with his wife and all his possessions. Chapter 13 So Abram left Egypt and traveled north into the Negev, along with his wife and Lot and all they owned. Abram was very rich in livestock, silver, and gold. From the Negev they continued traveling by stages toward Bethel, and they pitched their tents between Bethel and Ai where they had camped before. This was the same place where Abram had built the altar, and there he worshipped the Lord again. Lot, who was traveling with Abram, had also become very wealthy with flocks of sheep and goats, herds of cattle, and many tents. But the land could not support both Abram and Lot with all their flocks and herds living so close together. So disputes broke out between the herdsmen of Abram and Lot. At that time, Canaanites and Perizzites were also living in the land. Finally, Abram said to Lot, Let's not allow this conflict to come between us or our herdsmen. After all, we are close relatives. The whole countryside is open to you. Take your choice of any section of the land you want, and we will separate. If you want the land to the left, then I'll take the land on the right. If you prefer the land on the right, then I'll go to the left. Lot took a long look at the fertile plains of the Jordan Valley in the direction of Zor. The whole area was well watered everywhere like the Garden of the Lord or the beautiful land of Egypt. This was before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Lot chose for himself the whole Jordan Valley to the east of them. He went there with his flocks and servants and parted company with his uncle Abram. So Abram settled in the land of Canaan. And Lot moved his tents to a place near Sodom and settled among the cities of the plain. But the people of this area were extremely wicked and constantly sinned against the Lord. After Lot had gone, the Lord said to Abram, Look as far as you can see in every direction, north and south, east and west, I am given all this land as far as you can see to you and your descendants as a permanent possession. And I will give you so many descendants that like the dust of the earth they cannot be counted. Go and walk through the land in every direction, for I am giving it to you. So Abram moved his camp to Hebron and settled near the oak grove belonging to Memra. There he built another altar to the Lord. Chapter 14 About this time, war broke out in the region. King Amraphel of Babylonia, King Arioch of Elisar, King Kedarla of Aram, and King Tido of Goyim fought against the king Bera of Sodom, king Bersha of Gomorrah, king Sinab of Adma, king Shemba of Zebulun, and king of Bela, also called Zor. The second group of kings joined forces in Siddim Valley, that is the valley of the Dead Sea. For twelve years they had been subject to king Kedahoma, but in the thirteenth year they rebelled against him. One year later, Kedahoma and his allies arrived and defeated the Rephites at Ashtra, Karanam. The Zuzites of Ham, the Emites of Shavaharaman, and the Hamorites of Mount Sur, as far as El Paran, and the edge of the wilderness. Then they turned back and came to El Mishfa, now called Kadesh, and conquered the territory of the Malachites, and also the Amorites living in Hazan Tamar. Then the rebel kings of Sodom, Gomorrah, Adma, Zebaim, and Bela, also called Zor, prepared for battle in the valley of the Dead Sea. They fought against King Kadarma of Elam, King Tidal of Goyim, King Amaphel of Babylonia, and King Arioch of Elasa, four kings against five. As it happened, 
The valley of the Dead Sea was filled with tar pits. And as the army of the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah fled, some fell into the tar pits, while the rest escaped into the mountains. The victorious invaders then plundered Sodom and Gomorrah and headed for home, taking with them all the spoils of war and the food supplies. They also captured Lot, Abram's nephew, who lived in Sodom, and carried off everything he owned. But one of Lot's men escaped and reported everything to Abram, the Hebrew, who was living near the oak grove belonging to Memra, the Amorite. Memra and his relatives Eshcol and Aner were Abram's allies. When Abram heard that his nephew Lot had been captured, he mobilized the 318 trained men who had been born into his household. Then he pursued Keterleomah's army until he caught up with them at Dan. There he divided his men and attacked during the night. Keterleomah's army fled, but Abram chased them as far as Hobah, north of Damascus. Abram recovered all the goods that had been taken, and he brought back his nephew Lot with his possessions and all the women and other captives. After Abram returned from his victory over Kadamala and all his allies, the king of Sodom went out to meet him in the valley of Shava, that is the king's valley. And Melchizedek, the king of Salem and a priest of God Most High, brought Abram some bread and wine. Melchizedek blessed Abram with this blessing. Blessed be Abram by God Most High, creator of heaven and earth. And blessed be God Most High, who has defeated your enemies for you. Then Abram gave Melchizedek a tenth of all the goods he had recovered. The king of Sodom said to Abram, Give back my people who were captured, but you may keep for yourself the, all the goods you have recovered. Abram replied to king of Sodom, I solemnly swear to the Lord God Most High, creator of heaven and earth, that I will not take so much as a single thread or sandal dung from what belongs to you, Otherwise, you might say, I am the one who made Abram rich. I will accept only what my young warriors have already eaten, and I request that you give a fair share of the goods to my allies, Aner, Eshkol, and Mamre. My daily walk. How long have you lived in your present home? If your answer is less than three years, you are a typical American family. Genesis 12, 1-4 describes a similar moving experience. A God-fearing family obeys the voice of God, pulls up stakes in Ur, and heads for a new home more than a thousand miles away. But Hebrews 11.8 explains why this was no ordinary move. Abraham went without knowing where he was going. The command of God was clear, but the destination was not. That's faith, the kind that pleases God. Hebrews 11.6 and the kind God wants you to exercise today in similar situations. Abram, later called Abraham, found that you don't always need to know where you're going, provided you know whom you're following. Discuss with family or friends a decision you are facing involving career, home, or finances, and the way Abram's example can make your decision easier. Then memorize this verse together. Abram believed the Lord, and the Lord counted him as righteous because of his faith. Verses 15, 6. The evidence of knowing God is obeying God. That's all for today, folks, and I will see you tomorrow. Have a great day, and God bless.